My patent attorney told me that nobody would believe me unless I built it. I built it, it worked exactly as the theory predicted. I have given my life for humanity. I stood against great odds, against the U.S. government, who has fought this tooth and nail, tried to keep it away from you. And many congressmen, 11 congressmen, introduced bills into Congress to issue this patent to see that it would be produced for hundreds of millions of people across the earth. And that's the quote from them, that there was a conspiracy by the U.S. Patent Office and named Thomas Penfield Jackson, who's an SOB, uh, who stopped, tried to stop this technology. Norman Wootton is another free energy inventor who has come up against the Patent Office of America. In December 1994, myself and Joel McLean presented to the world a device known as the MRA. The MRA produces more output energy than the energy necessary to drive the circuit. It has been independently tested and verified by six different agencies with the final output figures as being 256 times more energy out than energy input. This information was provided through the National Security Agency, who we strongly suspect at the 11th hour caused the patent to be denied at the patent office, rejected with no explanation as to the reason for rejection. It's hard to believe, you know, here we are surrounded by the clouds and the mountains and, you know, the sky, and we're surrounded in a sea of energy. Dan Davidson, who has degrees in both physics and mathematics, believes the pyramids of Egypt hold the secret to free energy, and he has written a book that describes how certain shapes attract energy from the atmosphere, with the pyramid shape being the most efficient. But he too claims to have been sidelined by the Patent Office of America. There's a thing known as a uh, classified patent system, which hardly anybody knows about. And every time you apply for a patent, it goes through a screening by someone from the Department of Defense here in this country as well as other countries. And if this device has any kind of uh, defense associated in, uh, interest, they can classify the, the, the information, the patent, and tell the inventor to go pound sand. Free energy, uh, the nature that we're talking about, would be a very disruptive technology, at least initially. It would put out of business many people who um, make their living and make their profit from conventional energy sources. Sooner or later, though, the, the transition from the conventional to the free has to take place, simply because we're running out of conventional fuels. There is no argument from mainstream science that we are running out of gas, oil, and coal, the fossil fuels that have so polluted our Earth. However, the only alternative conventional science has thus far come up with is nuclear power with all its dangers and pollution consequences. And yet there are other sources of energy that while they may not be the complete solution, they must surely be worth investigating. Around the turn of the century, eminent British scientist Lord Kelvin said that radio has no future, heavier than air flying machines are impossible, and x-rays are a hoax. So much for conventional science. It turns out that all of the world's thunderstorms are charging the ionosphere, and if you put up an antenna maybe 30 feet, 50 feet tall, you can run this motor anywhere on the Earth and it'll just run forever as long as there's thunderstorms somewhere. And we can simulate a thunderstorm with a Van de Graaff machine here. The, here's our artificial thundercloud. Puts out maybe 300,000 volts. So if I connect myself in the circuit, the motor runs. So here's free energy that could be used all over the world. Plug it into the sky. You could harness electrical energy from the cloud and run a small motor with it. But the problem is that a lightning strike occurring could fry the motor and possibly you with it. Maybe I am dreaming, but I can see it run. Why am I obsessed with these non-round wheels? 
wobbly wheels that don't wobble. I can justify it and say I'm, oh, I'm trying to do toy research, but that's not the real answer. It's just, I'm fascinated. We had a real neat experience with an uh, anti-gravity experiment. Uh, New Energy News uh, published an article about... One fascination common to many free energy devotees is anti-gravity as a source of free energy. 